we're getting ready to cut a, a screw fade in the back plate for a real we had a practice cut on a bit of steel pipe that worked very well I've screwed the four jaw chuck back on everything's running nice and true I've had a clock gauge on there it's absolutely perfect we've lost no zeros at all by screwing the chuck on and off I've sharpened the tool just with a slip stone it was actually very good if it hardly marked it at all cutting that the thread in the steel tube it should do equally as well in the cast iron what I'm going to do I'm going to show you how I set up the compound today at the right angle and I'll we'll have a quick look in the back of the lathe at the change gears just to show what I've done in there I'll take the tool out right we're cutting a whip wire thread whip wire thread is 55 degrees metric 60 whip wire 55 if I was to put that tool in there and try cutting the thread just by winding out on the cross slide and cutting on both sides of the tool chances are I would break the tool that's a real heavy cut so what you do is you angle the compound slide to half the angle of the thread which is 27 and a half degrees which means that when you put the tool in when you advance the tool in the tool advances in like that and you're only cutting on the front face of the tool the back face of the tool just rubs it so you advance in and you cut on the front face and the back face just rubs so the angle of this is very important at 27 and a half degrees there's no graduations on this compound slate on there's no graduations on the cross slate I use a protractor to set it up. We'll just take the tool out because really what that tool wants to do, it wants to cut the back of your hand open, it can't wait to hurt you. So we'll take that out of there, put it away. Right, the angle there must be 22 degrees, the angle between that and the jaw. That angle there is 22 degrees. So what I've done, I've set we protract that at 22 degrees and I wind that in until that is touching the face plate or the chuck or the job and I know that that angle there will be 22 degrees a quick way to check you've got it right the angle of that tool there that's a 55 degree tool half of that's 27 so that angle there is 27 degrees there to there 27 degrees so that would be the same angle as your compound slide so the angle that that tool makes, the trail edge of the tool, is going to be the same as the angle of the compound slide. So you look down it and you can see that the same. So you know you're right. Right, we're looking for the angle there. That angle is the same as that angle. They're pointing in the same direction. They're pointing the same way. So we know we've got this set at 22 degrees. We know it's 22 degrees because we've had a protractor on, but we know it's the right way. The tool needs to be on centre height. To put the tool on centre height, I use the tool Greg centres. I use it all the time now, it's a well worth making. Very simple idea, but that, that tool is dead on centre height. I keep that tool up in a metal handy. Next thing is the tool must be square to the job. By square to the job, I mean it must be not like that, not like that, it's got to be square to the job we use one of these a tool setting jig, some people call it a fish tail probably because it looks a bit like a fish's tail the tool has a little notch in 55 degree notch which fits perfectly onto our tool so what you would normally do is that would put it on the tool like that and you would wind that in until the, the base of the tool Touch the face of the job. We can't on this instance because the, the face of the job is not wide enough. What we can do, however, we can put the tool, we can put the gauge inside there, so it's touching bollocks. So it's touching the face of the ball, and we could do it that way. What I'm going to do to make it easier for the camera and for me. Put something flat in square up against the chuck like that and I can use that 
to rest the tool on, just it's easier for the camera to see, that's all. So the tool fits into a little groove, like that. It's a perfect fit in there. And you need the two, the two legs to touch. On that bit of bar we've got resting against the job which it is basically there both of those are touching the the job so to speak and the little V, the little notch is perfectly lined up on the tool that means the tool is set correctly to the job right this is the gearbox on the front of the lathe it gives you all the possible threads you can cut the lathe is actually imperial, we're cutting imperial thread, I can do metric as well. Right, we want six threads of the inch, which is that one there. So on six threads of the inch, we need to line up, quite simply line that one up with a six. And it tells me that the other one should be in position A, which is this one across here. Right, six A. It also tells me that I need a 40 tooth stud wheel. So we'll go to the back of the lathe where the change wheels are. Right, we're in the back of the lathe now. We'll set a 40 tooth stud gear. That's a stud gear there. That's a 40 tooth. It's got 40 root on. I know it's 40. I've counted them. This gear here is a compound gear. What they call it. It's, it's, a, trans it's a transition gear. It's got 127 teeth on that one and 100 on that one. That's the gear you use when you're cutting metric threads. We're not using that one, we're using the one big gear. It's a straightforward drive. That one, that one, and onto that one. That's your screw gear. That goes into the gearbox. That one is 56. It's always 56. So we've got a 56 on there. All that does is transfer the drive from that one to that one. So we've got a 40 on there. Down throw that one to a 56. These two little top gears, that's what they call a tumbler reverse. That's a neutral position there. Where it does nothing. What these are for is for reversing the drive if you want to cut left or right hand threads. So you put it in that way, you can see that's turning clockwise. You put it the other way, that's turning counterclockwise. Simple as that. We're going to cut the thread and back here with the lathe running fairly slow. Make sure the carriage is well away. Right, I'll start the lathe up so you can see the, the gear's working. We'll put it in neutral first. Right, nothing's moving, just the, the chuck's turning around. And right, that's turning through the gearbox, turning my lead screw. In that direction. What you do need to make sure is when you set these gears up, you set them up with backlash. A little bit of free play between the between the teeth, otherwise you get a horrible binding noise. These are renowned for being noisy and rattly anyway, it doesn't matter. Over oh, in here we'll put a little bit of a little bit of oil on them. I normally use motorcycle chain spray grease but I haven't got any. So a little bit of engine oil have to do. Okay, we need to make sure that we've got plenty of tool sticking out to go right through the job and also we have plenty of clearance between the lathe carriage and the chuck jaws. You can see I've got the chuck jaws sticking out. So we'll wind that through there. Right, and that's right through. See the tool's actually sticking out in there. We'll turn that and we'll have plenty of clearance between the, the chuck and the carriage. You check now, you don't check under power later on when things start to get a little bit exciting. Right, the first thing we do is adjust the cross slide until the tool is just touching the, touching the job, which is there. I've got the compound slide set to zero. I've got to stop on the cross slide. I'll talk about this in a later video.
right so that stops the prostate coming any further this way so when that's touching there my tool is just touching the workpiece we'll zero that would make no difference so what it means is I can go back out and then come back into here and that touches there I haven't got to worry about it all I've got to worry about is my compound slide putting the feed on right I'm going to check again that's just touching the job it's up against me stop so I'm going to put a cut on with a compound five thousandths that's all it needs everything's set up we're ready to go start the lathe up we're watching for our indicator coming around I'm going to slow it down so that it's right down for its first cut I'm watching for the tool coming out the back so I've disengaged the lead screw I wind that in, turn it half back out that up against the stop, I can't go wrong Another five thou. Watch for our indicator coming on again. That is, uh, that's pretty good that. It will settle for that. And he's really nice and true now, we'll take it up to his place, put it into his Harrison L5 lathe and machine this to finish stage or chuck. Please to see the back of the bloody thing. It's a nice fit on the threads, and you can feel it there. It's starting to grip on the on the register. That is absolutely love on the dog's bollocks. Very happy. Very happy with that. You just feel it gripping. As it gets on the register, tightens up nice.